So if you look at a classic real estate investor journey, most people start out small by themselves, continue doing smaller deals, and eventually scale up to larger deals. Now, I've certainly been through that path myself, right? I started by buying myself, then raising money to buy smaller deals. Now we're raising money to buy some quite large deals. But one of the things that I'm still continuing to focus on today is still continue to purchase some small multifamily, particularly in the Boston market. Now, this might be a little bit counter as compared to most scaling plans that a lot of people have for their commercial real estate businesses, but I'm gonna tell you in this video why I th wanna continue to buy small multifamilies even as we continue to scale up and buy larger buildings. So with that, let's get at it. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and I'm a real estate investor out of Boston and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of the video, two super quick things guys. Number one, if this is your first time on my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button putting out tons of new videos every single week, talking about multifamily investing, capital raising, syndication, and everything in between. So if that's the kind of content you're looking to hear, make sure you subscribe to the channel and tune in. So with that, let's get right into the meat and potatoes. And as I said in the introduction, right, you know, my company has certainly started to scale up and buy some larger and larger commercial buildings um, around the Boston areas where we primarily buy. But one of the things that I still wanna do um, and we're still continuing to do is still continue to purchase some smaller multifamily buildings. Now you may think, why Leo, right? I mean, if you're scaling up with larger buildings, you certainly get the scale for a lot, you know, that makes a lot of business sense. And I certainly agree with that. But multifamily, small multifamilies, particularly in a market like Boston, I think have some very, very significant advantages, right? First of all, buying in a market like Boston, I think is, you know, is what I'm all about, right? If you guys have seen my other videos, you know that I'm hyper-focused in buying uh, inventory today in some class B and a lot of class A locations, right? Because, you know, a market like Boston, I see as incredibly stable, durable, and is able to continue to provide demand growth over a long period of time, right? Five, 10, 15 years. Right, so I see a very long trajectory for this market. I think it's gonna to continue to be incredibly stable. So I wanna be as invested as possible in a market like this. Now, in terms of specifically continue to buy small multifamilies, small multis actually have some unique advantages that, you know, even though larger commercial real estate offers that scalability aspect, it lacks some of these specific advantages. And number one, and I'll give you guys some of these examples, right? So number one, is on the acquisition side. When you scale up and go after the bigger buildings, you're typically starting to compete against much more sophisticated players. Now, nothing wrong with that, right? I mean, of course, you know, the larger the buildings, it's a good thing. There's a lot of sophisticated players with a lot of, you know, that are very well financed. That's all good and well, and we've certainly won our fair share of bids at this point. But, you know, when you're dealing with those small multis and you're going kind of against your more mom and pop investors, if you can set up a truly, you know, expert kind of professional shop and you're good at what you do, that's an easy way to stand out, right? And be the obvious go-to choice as the investor that wins the deal. So I've been able to win a lot of deals over the years just from the fact that we have a fantastic resume, a ton of experience, great operation. It's helped us really acquire a lot of deals at very, very attractive prices. The second bucket of kind of advantages I would say with small multifamily is the exit strategies I think is way better than with large commercial real estate, right? Because with large commercial real estate, one of the things that is not necessarily my favorite thing about larger commercial real estate is your exit is pretty much limited to selling to another investor, right? If you wanna unload a large multifamily building, your only real buyer is gonna be another investor who's gonna come in and value the, the building on an NOI basis and do the math and kind of come up with a number that way, right? Nothing wrong with it. It's just how, you know, it's just how commercial real estate and commercial multifamily is sold. Now with small multifamily, I have way more flexibility, right? With small multifamily, we can certainly sell it like that, right? We can sell it on an NOI basis to an investor who is, you know, looking just at the stream of income. That's fantastic, but we have a few other options. We can also sell them a small multifamily to a owner occupant who's looking to buy a multifamily, right? So, you know, we call them house hackers, right? That's a popular term today, but it's someone that's gonna use an owner occupant loan to buy a two to four unit um, and live in one unit and rent out the other unit or two or three. Now, that's attractive because these kinds of owners 
tend to pay, you know, a lot more money than a straight, you know, investor who's valuing the basis on NOI basis, right? Because for that, uh, you know, quote unquote investor who's owner occupying, you know, sure, there's some financial analysis going on for that investor as well. But you got to remember, they're also looking at, a, at their primary home, right? So there's going to be a little bit more of an emotional play for them when and when typically the more emotions you have, typically the price goes up. But you can all we can also sell these buildings as completely residential buildings and co essentially condo the buildings out, right? So if you look at particular in Boston, right, a lot of the multifamilies we buy, we have this thing called the triple decker. If you're from Boston, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, it's kind of the bread and butter inventory of Boston. I mean, we're completely flooded with this type of inventory. Essentially, it's a three family that stacked three levels, right? One unit on top of the other, on top of the other. It's a nice kind of like rectangular shape. Very, very, very common in Boston. And what a lot of, you know, and a lot of condos uh, um, and condo product in the Boston area comes from these triple deckers, right? People have owned these triple deckers and you can essentially condo the building out. And the advantage of that is you can sell off these condos to condo owners, right? Or again, owner occupants. And with owner occupants and condo owners, again, you're dealing with owner occupants. So there's no real like, you know, NOI analysis or anything like that. You're just going straight on comps as well as emotions, right? And again, with emotions, with uh, owner occupants, usually what happens is you're able to get significant premiums as uh, you know, for the building as a whole, as opposed to if you were going to sell that building as one asset to an investor. So that's what I really, really like about the, you know, the smaller multifamilies. I think, you know, there's a lot of uh, inefficiencies when you're buying the building and there's a lot of inefficiencies when you're exiting the building, which allows to really produce attractive results. Now, yes, again, I get it that the scale and operation is certainly going to be much harder than if you're going to go buy a few larger buildings. Believe me, I understand that. Um, you know, we are, like I said, we are certainly doing both right now, buying larger buildings. We're still buying the smaller buildings. Um, it is certainly more operationally intense. We're hiring for that role. Um, so I can tell you, the, I'll be the first person to tell you I agree with that. But I do think that, you know, the, the returns that you can generate on these smaller buildings are certainly still very, very attractive and attractive enough where I think we're going to continue to buy those even as we scale up our larger commercial assets. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Again, you know, I don't think there's necessarily a right answer to this. Um, I'm just giving you guys my thoughts on why I really like small multifamilies, particularly in markets like Boston. Um, you know, I think these class A, you know, especially in like these kind of class A markets, these are, you know, Boston is a global hub. I want to own as many possible, as many assets as possible, you know, so that's, that's part of my plan. So hopefully that's helpful for you guys. Of course, if you have any questions, comments, make sure you put them in the comments below and I'll definitely help you out.